What's up, Cal Gang? All right, so we got this question here. We're trying to find the magnitude and direction of the electric field uh, due to these three charges on point B. So let's go ahead and get started. So when you have a question like this, you want to break it up into parts. We've got three forces acting on it, so we're going to find the force from each one of them that acts on P, and then we're going to just take the sum of them all. So our equation that we're going to be using for all of this is that the electric field is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times the charge over the distance squared. So what does this mean? Well, this is how you can find how much this point, for example, pulls on P. So let's go ahead and find that, right? So we know pretty much all this stuff, right? We have this triangle here. Uh, so we need to find the distance, first of all. The distance is, what is this? This is the distance. This is R. So R is going to be equal to, of course, the square root, because this is a right triangle. That's going to be eight squared, 8 squared plus 6 squared. And that's just going to be equal to 10, actually. So we know that R is equal to 10. So all we can do is basically just plug all this stuff in. So if we're looking for, let's just label this one, this is point one. So if we're looking for uh, charge point one, it's gonna be equal to one over four pi epsilon naught times the charge of it. So it's gonna be negative five times 10, but 10 to the negative six because we want it in normal coulombs, not uh, micro coulombs. And then over radius squared. So 10 is in centimeters actually, so we need it in meters, so 0 0.1 squared. So what this is going to give you is that in the, um, what is that in just pulling at this angle, right? But that's not what we're trying to find. We need to split it into its x and y components because when we sum them all up, you want it in like Cartesian vector form. So what we're actually going to need to do is uh, we can leave this as this for now. But we want to split it up into sine and cosine. So there's a theta here, right? There's this theta. And if you want to find how much it pulls in the x direction, it's going to be equal to this line. And if you want to find how much it pulls in the y direction, it's going to be equal to this line. So of course, we can say cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's going to be 6 over 10. So this gives us this ratio, right? Because uh, we know its distance is 6 centimeters over 10 centimeters. We know its ratio. It's going to have a like triangle and the same thing. So cosine of theta simplified is 3 over 4, or 3 over 5. But actually, that's not true. This is a negative 6 centimeters, right? Because it points this direction. So this is negative 6. This is negative 3 over 5. Now, same thing for sine. Sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So it's going to be 8 over 10 simplified to 4 over 5. So we have the total force. This is basically the equivalent triangle to what this thing is here. So if we want to find just the x direction, we're just going to multiply it by cosine of theta. And if we're going to find the y direction, we multiply it by sine of theta. So let's do that. So we're going to write this like this. So x is cosine of theta. So we're basically multiplying. This is the, uh, the force, just the total force acting in whatever that angle is. So we multiply it by cosine theta i, that gives us just it i, plus sine of theta j. Gives in the y direction. But of course we know cosine of theta is negative 3 over 5, and sine of theta is 3, 4 over 5. So this simplifies to, let's see, did I write that number by itself? I did not, but we know that epsilon naught, uh, did I write that somewhere? Yeah, epsilon naught, uh, this is just a number you gotta like, have somewhere 8.854 times 10 to the negative 12. So if you plug that in for epsilon naught and you say cosine, like I said earlier, cosine and sine, we figured out what these are. Cosine is negative 3 over 5, and then this is 4 over 5. If you just multiply this out, you're going to get that this is negative 2.697 times 10 to the 6 i plus. 3.596 times 10 to the 6 j. And of course, those are Newton columns. So that's E1. Do the same thing for E2 and E3. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, E2. E2. Uh, I guess we're going to have this one be 2. So we just pull straight in the extra, right? So all we have to do is use this formula 
and pretty much just figure that out. So E2 is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, magnitude of Q, which is negative 2 times 10 to the negative 6, converting it from two just normal columns over the radius squared. We know it's 6 centimeters, so 0 0.06 squared. Um, but that's a negative, right? It goes, but we know that, yeah, we just know that it's pushing, it's pulling it left, right? So we know that there's gonna be a negative out front. And then this is i hat, and then of course it's gonna be zero, uh, j. So if you do the math on this, um, you get negative 4.99 times 10 to the 6 i. All right, so it's three. Three is going to be very similar to two. It's actually just pushing in a different direction. So x is still pulling it left, but instead y is pulling it down. So let's just kind of look at what we did for e1. Three. So it's going to be one over four pi epsilon naught, of course. So q, uh, same charge, negative five times ten to the negative six over the distance again is zero point one zero. If we draw that other triangle, it's because it's going to be very similar. But this time, this triangle is negative six, negative eight. So if we go back to what we did here, it's gonna be this, and that's gonna be negative instead this time. So it's gonna be negative three fifths i, but it's gonna be minus four fifths j. Again, we draw this triangle. How this triangle kind of looks. We know that this is negative six centimeters, we know that this is negative eight centimeters, we know that this is 10, the magnitude of that is 10. So of course, this is our theta that we're pulling at. So cosine of theta, negative six over 10, or negative three over five sine of theta is equal to negative eight over 10, or negative four over five. And of course, if you just take cosine of the magnitude, which is, this is the magnitude, then you're gonna find just it pulling in the x direction. So there you go, multiply by that, by that, and we're gonna get e three. Very similar numbers to this, you're gonna get negative 2.697 times 10 to the six i, but instead of being a positive, it's gonna be negative 3.596 times 10 to the six j. Is that even legible? Like really, yeah, you can kind of read that, right? I hope so, because it's like dark, dark backboard. Okay, so we have these three, right? So if we're just gonna find the electric force of P, We're just going to take E1 plus E2 plus E3. So of course what that's going to mean is it's going to be this negative 2.697 times 10 to the 6 uh, plus this negative 4.99 times 10 to the 6 plus this one. So what that gives you is, uh, did I write this down? I think so. Oh, of course, okay. So negative 1.04 times 10 to the seven, that's a seven, Newton columns, I hat. And then what's gonna happen is it's gonna be plus 3.596 times 10 to the six plus zero minus 3.596 times 10 to the six, which is gonna give you plus zero J hat, which actually makes sense, right? Anything that this is pulling up on is being pulled down on by this one because it's uh, kind of symmetrical across the X axis. So there's going to be no force total, or no sum of the force in the y direction. So how you can write this is it's just going to be 1.04 times 10 to the 7. How do I keep doing that too? 7 Newton columns to the left. There you go. That's your answer. That's how you do these kind of problems. Uh, it's kind of a lot of work, but it's kind of like repetitive work, right? So if you can just memorize this formula and remember how your sines and cosines work, uh, that's how you're going to want to get started on these problems. So good luck with your talk and uh, physics homework, and I'll see you next time.